Hi, welcome to our channel of Igno Audio Books, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Social Sciences, SOS, Master's Degree Programs, M.A. in Psychology, MAC, Second Year, MPC 0 to 1 Counseling Psychology, Block to Counseling, Models and Approaches, Unit 1 Psychoanalysis, Psychodynamic and Psychotherapy, 1.0 Introduction. In this unit we will be dealing with psychotherapy, psychoanalysis and other related therapies. It provides a detailed account of psychoanalysis and presents the component factors in the same. We then discuss the essentials of psychotherapy and point out its importance. Then we take up psychoanalysis and as the first step, we elucidate the evolution of psychoanalysis and then follow it up by presenting. A history of psychoanalysis. Then we take up the functions of a psychoanalyst and detail the same. This is followed by the goals of psychoanalysis and the techniques of psychoanalysis. The next section deals with the psychodynamic therapies and their significance. Then we point out the differences between psychodynamic therapy and psychoanalysis. 1.1 Objectives After completing this unit, you will be able to times discuss the concept of psychotherapy, times define psychoanalysis, times describe the goals of psychoanalysis, times identify the difference between psychodynamic therapy and psychoanalysis, and times explain the techniques like dream analysis and free association used by the psychotherapist. 1.2 Psychotherapy Psychotherapy consists of the whole range of psychologically based treatments by which trained practitioners help people who have psychological problems. Sometimes it is used in more restricted way. It refers to forms of treatment in which a psychotherapist and a client tackle client's problem through talking. Traditionally, it focuses on serious problems associated with intra-psychic, internal, and personal issues and conflicts. Characteristically, it emphasizes the following issues, times the past more than the present, Times insight more than change, times the detachment of the therapist, times the therapist's role as an expert. Psychotherapy is a systematic interaction between a therapist and a client that brings psychological principles to bear on influencing the client's thoughts, feelings, or behavior to help that client overcome abnormal behavior or adjust to problems in living. The interaction is between two or more individuals where one of them, called client or patient, is seeking help for a problem and the other participant, called therapist, provides necessary therapeutic help. The interaction is usually mediated by verbal means although facial expressions, bodily gestures and movement are also used. It usually involves a long-term relationship that focuses on reconstructive change. Psychotherapies are procedures in which persons with Mental disorders interact with a trained psychotherapist who helps them change certain behaviors, thoughts, or emotions so that they feel and function in a better way. It helps the patients to manage their symptoms better and function at their best in everyday life. It consists of a series of techniques for treating mental health, emotional and some psychiatric disorders and helps the individuals understand what helps them feel positive or anxious as well as accepting their strong and weak points. 1.2.1 Essentials of Psychotherapy A Systematic Interaction Psychotherapy is a systematic interaction between a client and a therapist. The therapist structures the therapy process based upon a theoretical viewpoint and an understanding of the client's cultural and social background. 2. Psychological Principles Psychotherapy is based on psychological theory and research in various areas such as personality, learning and abnormal behavior. 3. Thoughts, feelings and behaviors. Psychotherapy influences clients, thoughts, feelings and behavior. 4. Psychological disorders, adjustment problems and personal growth. While psychotherapy is often used with people who have psychological disorders, it can also be used to help people with Adjustment, loss of spouse, shyness, and personal growth. Psychotherapy or talk therapy is currently used by psychologists and other 
professionals in different forms. It uses varied range of procedures and can be conducted with individuals as well as with groups. There are many different therapy styles and techniques including psychodynamic psychotherapy, cognitive, behavioral therapy, CBT, group therapy, and couples therapy. The unique elements of psychotherapy are that it varies according to different theoretical perspectives. The first organized system of psychotherapy which has a considerable influence in the field of psychology was psychoanalysis by Sigmund Freud. 1.3 Psychoanalysis Psychoanalysis is a very significant perspective in the field of psychology. It is a method of analyzing psychic phenomena and treating emotional disorders that involves treatment sessions during which the client or the patient is encouraged to talk freely about personal experiences and especially about early childhood and dreams. Psychoanalysis is both a theory of mental functioning and a specific type of psychological treatment philosophy. It is generally known as a theory of human behavior. It has three applications. I. A method of investigation of the mind. 2. A systematized set of theories about human behavior. 3. A method of treatment of psychological or emotional illness. Psychoanalysis was first devised in Vienna in the 1890s by Sigmund Freud. It involves analyzing the root causes of behavior and feelings by exploring the unconscious mind and the conscious mind's relation to it. It focuses on an individual's unconscious, deep-rooted thoughts that often stem from childhood. Freud believed that ID, ego and superego are three major parts of personality, which represent desire reason and conscience. He was of the opinion that the root cause of all mental disorders is repressed, desired in the unconscious mind. This repression occurs due to non-acceptance of ID impulses to ego or superego. These urges persist in the unconscious and individuals devote a considerable time to have a check on them and to keep them out of conscious part of the personality. People often use defense mechanisms to protect the ego from feeling of anxiety generated by these inner conflicts. 1. 3.1 Phases in the Evolution of Psychoanalysis Freud, 1914b1927, described three phases in the evolution of psychoanalysis. The first phase, during first phase of psychoanalysis, Freud found that the central aspect of human mind was unconscious thoughts that could be accessed through dreams, fantasies, jokes, slip of tongues, hypnosis, free association, and so on. The second phase, in the second phase, Freud discarded hypnosis and emphasized on free association. He found that clients voluntarily permitted the emergence of unconscious materials in free association. As Freud always wanted a unique theory, so he developed his own specific techniques like dream analysis, free association, and so on. Third phase, during the third phase, he elaborated his dream analysis technique and described primary and secondary processes. Primary processes are governed by ID, the pleasure principle, and are illogical. They can be found in dreams, poetry, myth, and magic. Psychosis is the ultimate form of this process. Secondary processes are governed by logic and are associated with the ego and reality principle. At the end of the third phase of psychoanalysis, other analysts such as Jung, 1875-1961, Adler, 1870-1937, Horney, 1885-1952, Sullivan, 1892-1949, and Erickson, 1902-1992, modified Freud's psychoanalysis. 1.3 point to brief history of psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis has also its roots in hypnosis. The first contributor was Franz Mesmer, who is known for inducing a mental state called mesmerism. He has presented the idea of animal magnetism. He used magnets for the treatment of paralysis. Later he claimed that he could treat paralysis without magnets by directing his own magnetic fluid to the patient's body. Leibolt and Bernheim introduced mesmerism in the Nancy School, France. Jean 
Martin Charcot was a French neurologist who used hypnosis to treat hysterical patients. In 1885, Charcot introduced Freud to hypnosis. Freud began developing his own theory of psychoanalysis under Charcot's influence. Joseph Brewer introduced Freud to cathartic method of treatment of hysteria. Freud emphasized on unconscious drives. He used the term psychoanalysis in three distinct ways. Firstly, it is a theory which describes the structure of the mind, the development of the personality, and psychopathology. Secondly, it is used as a technique to treat psychological difficulties. And thirdly, it is a method of scientific investigation based on a clinical observation called case study. Anna Freud, 1895-1982, was especially instrumental in carrying on her father's tradition, particularly in her pioneering work on defense mechanisms. Carl Jung, viewed by Freud as his heir apparent, separated away from Freud's inner circle. He had serious differences with Freud's theory of drives. He agreed with the importance of the unconscious but condemned Freud for his overemphasizing the sexual and aggressive drives. Jung emphasized on collective, unconscious which was consistent with Freud's primitive universal fantasies. He laid emphasis on cultural symbols and believed that humans inherited a desire for higher religious fulfillment and self-development. Alfred Adler was the first disciple of Freud to disagree with the master. He developed individual psychology and emphasized on societal pressures which shaped the personality and believed that behavior is motivated by need to be superior. Karen Horney disagreed with Freud's premise that women have penis envy rather. Felt that men, on the other hand, envied women. She believed that the basic anxiety results from disturbances in parent-child relationships and in attempting to deal with basic anxiety, individuals develop a characteristic social orientation, dependent, submissive, inflated self-concept, avoidant, etc. Dot. Eric Erickson agreed with Freud that development occurred in stages but emphasized social as opposed to sexual development. He described that development occurs across the lifespan and believed that ego is a relatively powerful part of personality that functions to establish and maintain a sense of identity, ego psychology. Dot. Carl Rogers Klein Center Therapy's core focus is on analysts' patient, empathetic, uncritical and receptive approach. Otto Rank, a devoted follower of Freud, rejected theories of Oedipus complex. He related all neurotic anxieties to birth trauma. The central part of his theory was separation anxiety and believed that all forms of separation reactivated the primal anxiety of birth trauma. Sandor Ferenczi, a close colleague of Freud's, is known as one of the most daring experimenters of the early psychoanalysts. He anticipated the humanistic movement in psychotherapy by emphasizing that the analyst could not be a mere detached observer. He felt that the analyst must have an attitude of genuine caring in order to assist the patient's healing caused by past abuse and the analyst cannot be in the position of an authority because it creates a hierarchical relationship between the analyst and client. He experimented with a technique called mutual analysis where he and the patient would take turns lying on the couch and free associating but this technique did not work out. Malani Klein's work is an extension of Freud's work, but also a transformation of Freud's original insights through her unique interpretive perspectives. Klein was also profoundly influenced by Sandor Ferenczi, her own psychoanalyst, working with children. Klein felt she had observed processes in pre adipal children that were very similar to Adipal conflicts in older children. Throughout her career, she attempted to theoretically justify these observations. In turn, Klein and her followers applied her practice and theory to work with psychotic adult patients. Klein's technique, in all cases, involved a method of using deep interpretations which she felt communicated directly to the unconscious of the client, thus bypassing ego defenses. The term object relations 
ultimately derive from Klein, since she felt that the infant introjects the whole, other with the onset of the depressive position during the ontogenesis of the self. As a therapy, psychoanalysis is based on the concept that individuals are unaware of the many factors that cause their behavior and emotions. These unconscious factors have the potential to produce unhappiness, which in turn is expressed through a score of distinguishable symptoms, including disturbing personality, traits, difficulty in relating to others, or disturbances in self-esteem or general disposition. American Psychoanalytic Association, 1998.1.3.3 The work of a psychoanalyst times the psychoanalyst basically helps the person to tell his or her story by establishing a solid working alliance with the client times he gathers background information and history and then selects the problem or issue to be worked on times he tries to explore the precipitating events and deals with resistance shown by client times he then collaborates with the client to form a diagnosis and treatment plan and increase the client's awareness regarding defensiveness times the psychoanalytic process helps in exploring the client's transference and monitors the therapist's counter transference Times psychoanalyst helps in examining how the past is impacting the present. Times the psychoanalyst helps the client to behave more effectively. Times he provides feedback and confronts discrepancies, negotiates with the client regarding homework assignments. Times the psychoanalyst reminds the client of the termination date and end therapy as agreed upon with the client. Times the psychoanalyst schedules follow up to as needed. 1.3.4 Goal of Psychoanalysis The goal of psychoanalysis varies according to the client, but they focus mainly on personal adjustment, usually inducing a reorganization of internal forces within the person. The primary goal in most cases is to help client in achieving insight which can consciously make them aware of the psychodynamics that underlie their problems. This awareness helps the clients to make adjustment to their current life situations. People repeatedly encounter and deal with repressed emotions, motives and conflicts. The second major goal is to help client work through a developmental stage, not resolved in primary goal. If accomplished, clients become unstuck and are able to live more productively. The final goal is to help clients cope with the demands of the society in which they live. The goal of psychoanalysis is to enable the person to deal with the unconscious urges in a realistic and mature manner. But the question arises how to penetrate the unconscious mind. The ways to penetrate take on a variety of forms varying from practitioner to practitioner. Freud suggested certain methods to achieve the aim or goal of psychoanalysis. Some of these methods include the following, times free association, Times dreams or fantasies, clients can learn how to interpret deeply buried memories or experiences that may be causing them distress. 1.4 Techniques in Psychoanalysis The six basic techniques of psychoanalytic therapy are 1. Maintaining the analytic framework 2. Free association 3. Dream analysis 4. Interpretation 5. Analysis of resistance 6. Analysis of transference each of the above is being discussed in detail below. 1.4.1 Maintaining the analytic framework This refers to a whole range of procedural and stylistic factors such as the analyst's relative anonymity, the regularity and consistency of meetings and in time, conclusion of the sessions. The psychoanalytic process stresses upon to maintain a particular framework to accomplish the therapy's goal. The consistent framework itself works as a therapeutic factor, 1.4.2 to free association. Freud and subsequent psychoanalysts widely used this technique as they considered that it provides important clues to the workings of the unconscious mind. They believed that mental events are meaningfully associated with one another and those clues to the contents of the unconscious can be found in the ongoing stream of thoughts, memories, images and feelings that we experience. It consists of the individual lying on a couch in a partly darkened room producing an uncensored 
non calculated account of what they are thinking and feeling during the session the nature of responses made during a free association session indicate the concerns and preoccupations of a person's unconscious as there is no censorship by the conscious mind the ego client reports immediately without censoring any feelings or thoughts the client is encouraged to relax and freely recall childhood memories or emotional experiences in this way unconscious material enters the conscious mind and the counselor interprets it at times clients resist free association by blocking their thoughts or denying their importance psychoanalysts make the most of these moments by attempting to help clients work through their resistance 1.4.3 dream analysis dream analysis is a particular tool of the psychoanalytic school of thought proposed by freud and jung and is considered as the first scientific approach to the study of dreams it gives an important set of clues to the unconscious mind because dreaming is thought to express levels of unconscious wish fulfillment expressive of the individual's deepest conflicts and desires freud was of the opinion that we can give expressions to our desires and impulses that we are unable to express during our waking hours because they are unacceptable by the society thus we can gratify illicit sexual desires and thoughts which we generally repress during the day in this clients report dreams to counselor on regular basis Freud believed that dreams were a main avenue to understanding the unconscious. He reported that in this way he gained important insight into the causes of clients problems. But Freud did not provide any specific and clear rule to interpret dreams and there was no way of determining whether that interpretation is right or wrong. Counselor uses the free association and other techniques to the bring unconscious material to the conscious. clients are encouraged to remember dreams the counselor analyzes two aspects with the manifest content and the other latent content 1.4.4 interpretation interpretation should consider part of all above mentioned techniques it consists of the analysts pointing out explaining and teaching the client the meanings of behavior that is manifested in dreams free associations and resistances when interpreting the counselor helps the client to understand the meaning of the past and present personal events interpretation is grounded in therapist's assessment of the client's personality and of the factors in the client's past that contributed to his difficulties counselor points out explains and teaches the meanings of whatever is revealed the therapist must be guided by a sense of client's readiness to consider it and it should be well timed counselors must carefully time the use of interpretation for better understanding of unconscious influences and impulses a general rule is that interpretation should be presented when the phenomena to be interpreted is close to conscious awareness another rule is that interpretation should always start from the surface and go only as deep as the client is able to go Also it is best to point out a resistance before interpreting the conflict that lies beneath it. 1.4.5 analysis and interpretation of resistance anything which works against the progress of therapy and prevents the client to produce unconscious material is called resistance. The client shows reluctance to bring unconscious material at the level of awareness. Freud viewed resistance as an unconscious dynamic that people use to defend against the anxiety and pain that would arise if they become aware of their repressed feelings resistance is a defense against anxiety that prevents clients and therapists from succeeding in their effort to gain insight into the dynamics of the unconscious the therapist must respect the resistance of clients and assist them in working therapeutically with their defenses If the therapist handles it properly it can be the most valuable tool to understand the client 1.4.6 analysis of transference Freud discovered and developed the psychoanalytic concept of transference which later on developed by many other analysts and professionals the concept developed out of the inappropriate ending of a treatment it is a client's response to a counselor as if the counselor was some significant figure in the client's past usually a parent figure 
Transference is a displacement of attitudes and feelings originally experienced in relationships with persons onto the analyst in the long, past history of the patient. It is a universal phenomenon. Patients are not aware at a conscious level of the displacement that has taken place. This allows the client to experience feelings that would otherwise be inaccessible. This is ambivalent in nature which can be positive, affectionate, as well as negative, hostile, towards the analyst. In positive, transference, the patient has confidence in the doctor. If intense, the patient may over-idealize the doctor or develop sexual feelings toward the doctor. In negative, transference, the patient may become resentful or angry toward the doctor if the patient's desires and expectations are not realized. This may lead to non-compliance, counter-transference. These phenomena increase emotionality and may thus alter judgment and behavior. In patients' relationships with their therapist, transference, and therapist, Relationships with their patients, countertransference, dot, 1.4.7 countertransference, this is an analyst's feelings that are thought to be related to what the patient is, projecting onto the psychoanalyst. In this, feelings about a client and the reaction of the counselor towards the client who reminds the doctor of a close friend or relative may interfere with objectivity. The counselor encourages this transference and interprets positive or negative feelings expressed. Analysis of transference allows the client to achieve insight into the influence of the past. Analytically, oriented therapists consider transference as the core of the therapeutic process as it aims in achieving awareness and personality change. It allows the clients to achieve insight into the influence of past on their present functioning and enables clients to work through old conflicts that are keeping them fixated and retarding their emotional growth. Through appropriate interpretation, clients become aware of their long-standing inappropriate behaviors and gradually change some of them. 1.5 Psychodynamic Therapies Historically, psychodynamic therapies are based on the principles of psychoanalytic theory that mental disorders stem primarily from the kind of hidden conflicts first described by Freud. The terms psychoanalytic and psychodynamic have been used. Synonymously, psychodynamic therapy or psychoanalytic psychotherapy is a general name for therapeutic approaches which try to get the patient to bring to the surface their true feelings so that they can experience them and understand them. These therapies assume that the mental disorders occur because something has gone seriously wrong in the balance between these inner forces. These therapies assert that a person's behavior is affected by his or her unconscious mind and past experiences. Both psychotherapeutic approaches derive from a set of principles derived from psychoanalysis. Among these principles are the dynamic unconscious, transference, counter-transference, resistance and psychic determinism. Several different approaches to brief psychodynamic psychotherapy have evolved from psychoanalytic theory and have been clinically applied to a wide range of psychological disorders. There is a body of research that generally supports the efficacy of these approaches. Psychodynamic therapy is the oldest of the modern therapies. Freud's psychoanalysis is a specific form and subset of psychodynamic therapy. As such, it is based in a highly developed and multifaceted theory of human development and interaction. There are four major schools of psychoanalytic theory, each of which has influenced psychodynamic therapy. The four schools are Times Freudian, Times Ego Psychology, Times Object Relations, and Times Self Psychology. 1.5.1 Freudian School. Freudian psychology is based on the theories first formulated by Sigmund Freud. It is sometimes referred to as the drive or structural model. The essence of Freud's theory is that sexual and aggressive energies originating in the ID or unconscious are modulated by the ego, which is a set of functions that moderates between the ID and external reality. Defense mechanisms are constructions of the ego that operate to minimize pain and to maintain psychic equilibrium. 
the superego, formed during latency between age 5 and puberty, operates to control ID drives through guilt. 1.5.2 Ego Psychology Ego Psychology derives from Freudian psychology. It focuses upon enhancing and maintaining ego function in accordance with the demands of reality. Heinz Hartmann, the father of ego psychology, studied the ways in which the ego organizes itself, adapts, and deploys ID drives. Ego psychology stresses the individual's capacity for defense, adaptation, and reality testing. Heinz Hartmann Leader of Ego Therapy It focuses on the ego's workings in creating defenses rather than focusing on the underlying ID content. It engages the patient with less emphasis on uncovering hidden secrets but more on psychic structure i.e. the relationships between the ID, the ego, and superego, Mitchell and Black 1995, 1.5.3 Object Relations Psychology Object Relations Psychology was first articulated Melanie Klein, W.R.D. Fairbairn, D.W. Winnicott, and Harry Guntrip. According to this theory, human beings are always shaped in relation to the significant others surrounding them. Our struggles and goals in life focus on maintaining relations with others, while at the same time differentiating ourselves from others. The internal representations of self and others acquired in childhood are later played out in adult relations. Individuals repeat old object relationships in an effort to master them and become freed from them. 1.5.4 Self Psychology Self Psychology, founded by Heinz Kohut, observed that the self refers to a person's Perception of his experience of his self, including the presence or lack of a sense of self-esteem. The self is perceived in relation to the establishment of boundaries and the differentiations of self from others or the lack of boundaries and differentiations. Self-psychology emphasizes empathy which is used to describe an intrapsychic process in the therapist by which an understanding of the patient, particularly an emotional understanding, the capacity to feel what the other is feeling is enhanced. Each of the four schools of psychoanalytic theory presents discrete theories of personality formation, psychopathology formation, and change techniques by which to conduct therapy. And indications and contraindications for therapy, like psychoanalysis, psychodynamic psychotherapy uses the basic assumption that everyone has an unconscious mind and that feelings held in the unconscious mind are often too painful to be faced. Thus we come up with defenses to protect us knowing about these painful feelings. Psychodynamic therapy assumes that these defenses have gone wrong and are causing more harm than good. It tries to unravel them, as once again, it is assumed that once you are aware of what is Really going on in your mind the feelings will not be as painful. Several forms of therapy are based on these assumptions, but the most famous is psychoanalysis. Developed by Freud, 1.6 difference between psychodynamic therapy and psychoanalysis, although similar to psychoanalysis as it was derived from a similar background, psychodynamic therapy is distinguished from psychoanalysis in several particulars, including the fact that psychodynamic therapy need not include all analytic techniques and is not conducted by psychoanalytically trained analysts. It tends to differ in the following ways. Psychoanalysis focuses on repressed childhood conflicts, ID content, ego activity. Times brings conflict to conscious awareness to overcome neurosis. Times all adult problems can be traced back to childhood. Times an interaction of ego, superego, and ID. Times tends to affect a lot more of your personality. Times conducted more frequently over a longer period of time, psychodynamic. Times less emphasis on sexual and aggressive drives. Times less emphasis on unconscious information. Times more emphasis on past relationships. Times offshoot of the psychoanalytic school. Times interpretation is main tool. Times mediator a conscience and a devil. Times has more specific goal e.g. sorting out a phobia. Times conducted over a shorter period of time with less frequency than 
Psychoanalysis 1.7 Summary Psychotherapy is procedures in which persons with psychological problems and mental disorders interact with a trained psychotherapist who helps them change certain behaviors, thoughts and emotions so that they feel and function better. The outcome of psychotherapy depends upon the client, the therapist and the techniques used by the therapist. Many forms of psychotherapy exist, ranging from the techniques used by Freud through modern techniques based on learning and cognitions. Psychoanalysis is a form of psychotherapy focuses on helping individuals gain insight into their hidden inner conflicts and repressed wishes. The goal of Freudian psychoanalysis is to achieve insight into the unconscious dynamics that underlie their behavior disorders so that they can deal adaptively with their current environment. The chief means for promoting insight is the interpretation of the client's free associations, dream content, resistance and transference reactions. Psychodynamic therapists view maladaptive behaviors as symptoms of an underlying conflict that needs to be resolved if behavior is to be changed. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel for more updates. And we will see you with the next chapter.